the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather together this evening to praise the Lord our God, to give God our Father thanks for everything that he has given us, um, especially the blessings and graces of this past week. Today, this evening, is also a very special occasion because here in our front row, we have three adults who are about to celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation during this Mass. And so we welcome Caitlin, Tom, and Kristen, and as we celebrate the coming down of the Holy Spirit upon you with this Mass, we welcome you, we pray for you, and we ask that uh, the Lord may bless you abundantly this evening. As we come into the presence of our good and loving God, as always, we turn to God with humble hearts, asking for his gifts of pardon and of peace. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence for you, you may nurture in us all that is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. 
Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will pay all, repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So there once was this woman who was plagued with this health problem that would not go away. So finally, she went to a doctor, and after waiting hours, she got into the doctor's waiting room, and the doctor finally came in and said, all right, you know, what's the trouble? And this woman said, well, for reasons I do not understand, every time I drink coffee, I get this pain in my left eye. I don't know why, and it happens to me every time. And the doctor said, well, is it recurring? Does it happen like during the day? She said, no, no, just when I drink coffee. So the appointment lasted about an hour, and the doctor could make neither head nor tail of it. And so the doctor was like, well, I guess we better uh, get you an appointment for a CAT scan. So we go to the nearest hospital. So after waiting three months, the woman got to get a CAT scan. She waited another six weeks to get the results, and nothing. She was perfectly fine. So the doctor was at his wit's end. He had her come back in. And they went through everything from A to Z, and then finally the doctor had an inspiration. He said, well, tell me what you put in your coffee. Because if every time you drink coffee, you get this pain in your left eye, maybe it's something you're putting in there. Maybe it's a chemical that doesn't agree with you. And the woman said, well, you know, every time I drink coffee, all I do is put some sugar in it, I give it a stir, and that's it. I really don't know what's going on. So the doctor sent her a bill the next day, and in the doctor's note, the doctor, she said the following. She said, well, I'll first give you the bill, then I'll give you the remedy. So she said, all right, for the initial meeting, $100. For the CAT scan, $2,000. For the follow-up meeting, $250. The remedy is, next time you drink your coffee, take the spoon out. Because you're poking yourself in the eye with that spoon. An old joke. If you heard it before, I do apologize. <laughs> But what is the idea here? Whenever we go to the doctor, whenever we have a problem, there's always four things we want to know. And sometimes it gets resolved simply, and sometimes it's more complicated and it gets a little more convoluted. And the four things we want to know are, what is the problem? What are the symptoms that I'm showing? A pain in my eye. The next thing is, what's the cause of that? What's the cause of it? The third thing? What's the remedy? How can I fix it? And the fourth thing, what do I need to do to fix it? So those are the four things we always need to learn when we go have a doctor's appointment. The problem, the reason for the problem, what's the remedy, and how can I go about getting the remedy for myself? So if you look at that set of four things, we know that every religion, every faith, tries to answer those four things with regards to life itself. Because life itself, we're always looking for those four things. What's the problem? And that's probably the one we know by heart. Everyone, every human being that exists knows that there's, in life, we come across some insolvable problems. Whether it's suffering, whether it's dying, the reality of death, whether it's sorrow, whether it's simply the feeling of, there must be more than this. 
We all are plagued with that problem. So we all know the problem. We all know what the symptoms are. And every religion offers the reasons for that problem, the causes of it. And so Buddhism would say, well, the reason you suffer is because you desire so much. Just get rid of desire and you will live a peaceful life. So again, Buddhism might offer, you know, what's the problem, the reason, and the solution, right? The Christian faith, again, gives us the problem. We all suffer. We all feel that there must be something more and that dying and death is a real problem and there must be more to life than this. And the readings today give us an answer to that problem, the cause of it. Why do we feel this way? Why do we feel ill at ease and struggling? And the readings today say, well, it's because that our hearts, our souls, are able to hold God. That we were created to be united with God forever, and we settle for less. And we settle for things that are kind of below us, that don't fully satisfy us. So whether it's our sinfulness, our human brokenness, whether you know it's we get distracted by things, the readings today, our faith tells us the cause for the problems of life is that we're made for God, but we end up getting far away from him for whatever reason. So that's the problem, and then that's the cause of the problem. And so Jesus, speaking to us in the gospel, says, all right, what's the remedy, and how do we get there? What's the remedy for being far from God, for knowing that we're made for him, but we, we're divided from him? So in the gospel... Jesus gives us these words of encouragement. He says, yes, in life you will carry your cross. In life you will encounter struggle, difficulty, you will feel ill at ease many times. But why is that? It's because you're made for God. Your heart is so, is the potential to be united with the creator of all things. And we get lost. We get lost in the way. So Jesus tells us, what's the answer? What's the remedy? Follow me. Take up that cross, because you're going to carry it anyway. No matter what we do, we always carry the burden of life with us. But Jesus says, follow me, and I will lead you to eternal life. And so my brothers and sisters, as we come into the presence of our good and loving God today, we come to him with our own particular problems, our own suffering, our own wrestling with the big questions of life. And we hear the call of Jesus. Jesus telling us, yep, you're going to carry that cross, but I'm carrying it ahead of you. And if you follow me, I will bring you to that place where truly you can fulfill the life that you were created to live. You can achieve eternal union with God. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we continue to celebrate this Mass, we recognize that everything we're given is a gift. And the greatest gift that we can receive is the gift of God himself, this gift of the Holy Spirit. And one of the greatest celebrations of this gift is the Sacrament of Confirmation, this calling down the Holy Spirit to give us strength in the midst of life's difficulties, to give us courage, wisdom, knowledge, to enable us to realize what we're meant for and to strive after that as followers of Christ. And so we have the joy of uh, welcoming our three who are about to be confirmed. And so I would ask you three and your sponsors to please stand as you prepare to celebrate this sacrament of confirmation. And so Caitlin, Tom, and Kristen, as you prepare to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit today, we ask that you renew your faith and profess before this community the faith that we all believe. And so, Caitlin, Tom, and Kristen, along with your sponsors, please respond, I do, to the following questions. Caitlin, Tom, and Kristen, do you believe, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, the father of sin and the prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And so now, as a community of prayer, we now call the Holy Spirit to come upon you with his gifts and grace. Dearly baptized, born again in Christ by your baptism, you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in that outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by God upon the apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to all of the baptized the promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. My dear friends, let us now all pray to God our Father that God will pour out the Holy Spirit on these baptized to strengthen them with his gifts and to anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you free your sons and daughters from sin and give them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon these to be their helper and guide. Give them your spirit of wisdom and of understanding, your spirit of right judgment and of courage, your spirit of knowledge and of reverence, and fill them with your spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this time, I invite Caitlin to please come forward to receive the Holy Spirit. Caitlin, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tom, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kristen, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. having joyfully celebrated the sacrament of faith. As one family, let us stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With our eyes and hearts fixed on the coming of the Lord in glory, let us bring our prayers and petitions to him. For Pope Francis, may the Holy Spirit continue to help him and persevere in his faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God inspire them in working to protect the sanctity of life at all stages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, may the Lord look with compassion upon their pain and bring them solace and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may God increase in us the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they be welcomed by God into the eternal joy of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in formation for the priesthood and the consecrated religious life, and those preparing for sacramental marriage, may the Holy Spirit guide their preparation for the vocation to which they are called. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are newly confirmed here today, that the Holy Spirit may fill them with the grace, the guidance, and the strength, and all the fruits that they need as they continue to live out their faith in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Jim and Linda Poirier, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause and call to mind our own personal intentions. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you are the Lord of all. We humbly ask you to listen to these, our prayers and petitions. We ask them all in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, 
confer on us always the blessings of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish with power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we have played. You are indeed holy, O Lord. All you have created rightly gives you praise. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by your same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and his ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this our sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of the entire world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Peter our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. Renewed by the bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So just a few things as we conclude Mass today. So again, just a big congratulations from all of us to all of you. So to Caitlin, Tom, and Kristen, um, our prayers follow you, and we ask that you may truly experience the joy of the Spirit today and every day. Um, before Mass, Deacon Joe did share with me that you were all his class, uh, his students, right? So I don't know if they were always in the front like this, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm sure they were, I'm sure they were. So again, congratulations to all of you. Um, coming up uh, in mid-September, on Friday and Saturday, September 11th and 12th, in order to celebrate uh, the musical aspect of our St. Thomas Aquinas community, and in fact, the entire community itself, we're going to be having a virtual uh, benefit concert um, starring our musicians and our, our musical communities. Again, can't be live just because of the circumstances, but we're going to try to make it available virtually. Uh, so that will be uh, Frank and the Contemporary Band will be hosting on September 11th from 6.30 to 8 on Facebook and uh, through our website. So if, um, if you're interested in supporting our community or just want to celebrate the great music that we have, that's Frank and the band on Friday night, the 11th, and then uh, Dave and the um, choir on uh, September 12th. Again, virtual because of the circumstances, but we do want to celebrate not only the music, which is always wonderful, but also our entire community as well. So tune in, Facebook and our website on those two days. Lastly, um, every little corner of our church, of our community, it takes so much work and it takes so much uh, goodwill effort. So every little thing that happens, we do try to recognize it when we can. So I don't know if you've had a chance to use our brand new bathroom over here. Beautifully done. So I felt a little funny announcing about a bathroom, but really it goes to show that no matter what it is, uh, everything that gets done, it takes, it takes effort, work, and the care and concern of all of us, right? So I want to thank um, for working and making this bathroom truly updated and beautiful. If you go in, you'll see um, Angela Bertolucini, Steve Murphy, for all those who worked on it, thank you very much. And I do want to thank in a special way Barbara Bellavo, who uh, had this project in mind. It was something that was a long time coming. She noticed it, and with the support of her husband, Roger, they made it happen. Uh, just, just one of those things that really needed to be done. So thank you so much. We say if we end up looking as good as that bathroom does, we'll be, we'll be in good shape, right? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Jesus.